I'm your audio guy from MyOuterSpace.com. I'm here with David Nemeting, the logic guy from Los Angeles. And we want to tell you a little bit about how we're flying high with logic on MyOuterSpace.com. Okay. How are you doing, Dave? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Um, we'd like to uh, talk a little bit about logic and the logers, logic users group and all those things that are going on in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and certification. I mean, certification is a real interesting topic because basically you wrote the book on how to become logic certified. So right. I wrote the book that uh, is the textbook for the workshops that lead you to Apple certification. So if you're interested in becoming uh, certified in Logic Pro, you have to know that book. So either you learn it by yourself or you come to one of our workshops. And in three days, basically, we go over all the steps required to, process, to produce music. Let's talk just a bit about, uh, you know, how you approach uh, your training program. I mean, um, give me some insight on, uh, I mean, I know that there's a DVD with material and things like that on there. I mean, the book, I've actually read it. It's, it's pretty darn good. Yeah, um, the whole concept behind the book was to get people in front of professional logic sessions and have you basically have you step into the shoes of the professional producer? So we take um, those professional logic sessions, we reverse engineer them a little bit to go back a few days before they were totally finished, and then we show you how to go through the steps that make them that turn them back into the finished product. I know the logic basically comes with, I believe, six programs. Um, Sound Edit Pro. Uh, Soundtrack Pro. Soundtrack Pro. Soundtrack Pro. Okay. The other one, uh, I believe, is Main Stage, Main which stage. I know is really cool. I have actually some friends in Europe that are doing that, where they use all their instruments and stuff, and they design their own interfaces, and they can use their own control services. And totally. It's a pretty, pretty intense program. It's really And powerful. what else is in the package? Uh, uh, well, that's really, you named it. I mean, those three programs, Logic Pro, Soundtrack Pro, and Main Stage, those are the three main programs that make the Logic Studio suite. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get uh, into utilities like Compressor that uh, helps you get smaller files. For example, if you're dealing with video files, Compressor is great at uh, making smaller files while keeping a very high quality. A couple of other utilities, one of them to uh, create your own impulse responses. That's when you want to get into recording the response of a room mm -hmm. to apply its reverb to your audio. So if you get into this nice church and you love its reverb, you can record the response of that church. And then in your little home studio, you could apply that to your instruments. And then there's a, a, another utility, uh, the Apple Loops utility, to create your own Apple Loops. So that's all stuff that we deal with in the, in the book and in the workshop. A lot of people ask me, well, what about post-production for film and, and for television and stuff? And I, well, Logic has all that really built in, all that power. Maybe you could, I mean, I know it comes with the time code built in with, you know, other applications. Those are like an add-on and an extra. Maybe you could speak to that just a little bit. Yeah, no, it has really all the tools you need. You can do post-production now in Logic. Uh, it's also very integrated with Soundtrack Pro, and Soundtrack Pro is a great post-production tool. Uh, so you can, if, um, you can choose to work just in Soundtrack Pro if you want, but if you want to compose music a little, a little bit at the same time as you're adding some post-production, then Logic is better at composing music, producing music. But you can still open your audio files in Soundtrack Pro and use all the power of the Soundtrack Pro audio editor to uh, fine tune your, your, your audio and maybe do some noise reduction or things like that. Do all your corrections and then you go back to Logic. You know, I think in the past, a lot of people associated with Logic, which being just a touch difficult to use, because when it was first a MIDI sequencer, you know, in its early days, I mean, you had to, it was so um, uh, open, like open code, you know that people get confused, but now you can call up these templates and they're ready to go. So you can get a, a production template with different guitar settings already set up and totally. you're ready to go, and, or like a film composer thing or a mastering section. So there's a lot of really cool things. Um, the other thing that, that I think was really interesting is the way they're doing the new flex time and stuff. So maybe, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, flex time is like probably 
the most important new feature in Logic 9. And it's, uh, what it does is it allows you to treat audio in a very flexible manner. It's almost like you're dealing with MIDI notes, except it's audio. So you got your audio recording. When you use FlexTime, the first thing Logic does is it's going to analyze the whole audio file and look for transients. Mm -hmm. So the attack of all your drum notes, if it's drums or, or, or whatever it is. And then you can move them. So you can either use flex time to move things around or to time stretch things around, depending on what kind of audio you're dealing with and what you want to do. And then you can use all the classic MIDI tools for moving uh, things in time. Like, for example, you can quantize. Uh, quantize used to be a difficult operation. Now it's just as easy to do uh, with audio as it is with MIDI. You pretty much you, you, you select your, your track and you, you select a quantized resolution and that's it, it's quantized. So what I find really interesting with FlexTime is that you can use it in a creative manner. And what I mean by that is that what you're seeing more and more is at the end of the day, the artist go goes home and the producers stays in the studio and with FlexTime they can be creative. He makes the artist a genius. It, yes, right? you know, in a way. Yeah. That's how all these geniuses get made because they use it flex time and stuff. Just go home, go home, I'll take care of that. Don't worry about your performance. Right, so that can be used to fix a, a flawed performance or that can be used to be creative. Even if the performance was good, maybe you want to experiment with something different. You, want, you would like your, your phrase to have a different feel or you want to rephrase a vocal uh, that's maybe rushing a little bit or or you want to apply a certain groove to a, a whole track, or you want to uh, extract the groove from the drums and apply it to the bass or the other way around, things like that. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the uh, Logic Users Group. Mm -hmm. uh, you are the head of the Logic Users Group, is that right? Yes, that's right. There's a lot of benefits to becoming part of the Logic Users Group. Can you address that maybe? Yes, definitely. So the Users Group started as a way for us to invite guests and usually professional uh, industry professionals who use Logic, be it for film composing, music production, engineering, post-production, whatever they, they do. And um, so that's how it started, really, getting professional guests to talk about how they use logic in the industry. But what I saw over the years develop is this fraternity you're talking about. The people who come stayed after the presentation, they would stay not just to talk to the presenter, but to talk between themselves. Right. And what do you do? Oh, you're a guitar player. I'm producing a track. I need a guitar pl player right now. Right. Give me your phone number. And there's a lot of networking going on. All right. Well, I'd like to know um, if you have any advice for uh, the, the users on myouterspace.com on the planet Orpheus. They actually, maybe some new people there. I mean, where would they get started? What's the best advice you might have for them to get started with logic? Well, get my book. <laughs> get the book? Let's start with the book. All that's, right. That's, that's, a good, a good that's actually good advice. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, seriously, it's a, it's a great way to get started. It, it was uh, written with a new user in, in mind. So even if you're starting from scratch, that's a great place to get started. Uh, there's also the manual. You know, a lot of people uh, shy away from the manual and think, uh, oh, it's huge, has many pages. and. I consider the manual more like a dictionary. Just go to it when you need a certain thing, specific things. So just search the index. Don't read the whole thing. It's gonna it's thousands of pages. Uh, really, the best way to learn is by doing. So rather than uh, if, whether you use the manuals or use my book or you come to a workshop, at the end of the day, to really learn, you want to produce music. So start producing music, and as you get frustrated with certain techniques, that's when you need to learn them, and that's the best way to really get those techniques into you. That's because they come from a need. Right. David, I'd really like to say thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, David Nemini from uh, Logic in Los Angeles, the leader of the group, and um, MyOuterspace.com, the planet Orpheus, where all the music people are. And uh, thanks again. Thank you for having me. We'll see you again soon.